Can we please um, give a huge cheer, uh, taking the Baba Bar stage for the first time, Johanna Wood. Well, good evening everyone, hello. I see the beer and the sperm have left the stage. I've got a couple of crusty ovaries, so you know, you have permission to go wild while I'm here. So, uh, I'm called Jo Wood, good rock and roll name, and I'm going to take you on a romp through an all-girl adventure. Some like it hot, which is how I always say it. So, this has got to be a rhetorical question because I've got so little time. How do you make a million pounds? And the answer is you start with two million and you form a jazz band. <laughs> I was unaware of this when I thought that I would start a jazz band, but it actually turns out to be quite important. So a little bit of backstory. I moved to live in Bexhill six years ago. And uh, as soon as I came down here, I joined the local swing and big bands. And there are lots of them and they're very good but they are all male. They don't say they're all male, but they are all male. Us girls, we're allowed to deputise or locum. We can go in and play for them sometimes, but mostly we're not going to get one of the important spots in a band. So if you're a regular in a band, it's called having the chair, and you might have the first trumpet chair or the first trombone chair, and it's yours. You're going to be allowed to go to every rehearsal, and you're going to be allowed to play at all the gigs. Um, and these pretty much go to dead men's shoes, because once you've got it, you have it forever, and then when you die, the second trumpet steps up to be the first trumpet, and he's a bloke as well. And I could just see that the girls were never going to get a shot at being in the chair of any of these local bands. And the reason you need to do it is because if you want to get good at this stuff, so say you're the first trumpet, you've got to have quite a big personality, you've got to blast out, you've got to improvise, and you can't get good at this stuff unless you're given an opportunity to do it. So I thought, well, do you know what? We need an all-girl band with all women in all the chairs. And so this fool decided that she would start it. So let's just go back. Here she is, the original all-girl power, Ivy Benson. So Ivy Benson formed an all-girl band in 1939, and she kept it going for 50 years. And there's her band on the right. Now, the only reason she ever got the gig was because all the men had gone off to war. And that's why we were allowed to actually start playing in bands. And uh, over 50 years, she got through 300 players. So that is about six players a year. And she tells this fabulous story. She said, I lost seven in New York once. She said, one of the girls got up to go to the loo in the interval and she never came back, ran off with a GI. So, you know, you kind of lost your drama halfway through the gig. Um, she was incredibly talented. She was what a band leader needs to be. So she was a child prodigy as a player. If you would Google her on YouTube, you'll just see her. She takes one breath and plays the saxophone for about five minutes, just unbelievably, marvellously. She was clearly a very good organiser. She was a multi-instrumentalist. Uh, often band leaders can arrange and write. And she, as I said, she kept her band going for 50 years. So what were my qualifications to run a band in Bexhead? Oh, there they are. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Nada, nothing. And I wanted to put some background music on here, which would be Fools Rush In Where Angels Fear to Tread, because that's what I did. So this is me, and this is uh, Barry the Baritone. So I play this great big saxophone, and I always get gigs because nobody else can be bothered to cart this huge instrument around. So yes, yeah, so that's me and Barry. And as soon as I thought about this band, I thought, well, do you know, I know who I'm going to model it on. I'm going to model it on Some Like It Hot, the film with Marilyn Monroe. And do you remember Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon were runaways, and they were cross-dressed into the band. And I thought, gee, that would be like a good sort of USP. I'll cross-dress guys into the band. Because all my band life, I've been having to be dressed like a bloke in some awful uniform with stripes down the side, no darts for your boobs. And I thought, they can wear a dress. You know, if I have to wear that stuff, they can wear a dress if I need them. I couldn't call us Some Like It Hot, which I wanted to because the name had gone. So we were Some Like It Hotter. 
And I got us our first gig before I actually had a band, which is, again, a little foolish. But I was talking about doing this. I was in the shop in Bexhill and said, uh, I think I'm going to form a band. She said, oh, I'm going to be the Lady Mayoress of Bexhill next week. We need a band for our gig at the Powder Mill. So I said, oh, we'll do it. And then, <laughs> then I had really put myself under a bit of pressure. And I also hadn't lived down here very long. I didn't know a lot of local musicians. So I did manage to get a band together for this gig at the Powder Mills. And there we were. And what I wanted was lots of glamour, because the other thing with these all-male bands, the blokes had turned up, so they'd just come off the beach, you know, kind of tarring the boat. They'd be in shorts and flip-flops. And I thought, we'll have loads of glamour. There we all are. In the centre is my beautiful little singer, Sophie, because I also, the lady singers in the bands were all of a type. They were a middle-aged lady, kind of channeling Ella Fitzgerald. And I wanted to give youngsters an opportunity who would never get a go to sing with a big band, because it's very exciting singing with a band. It's a very difficult skill, and you'll never get the skill unless you have a go. And can you see seated at the front a French horn? So it turns out I couldn't actually find enough lady trombone players. So we had a French horn, which is unusual, but she was fabulous. And I'll just show you a little bit of that powder mills gig. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Oh. Let's, we're going to stop. Yeah, sorry, sorry. It's important you hear this. Sorry, I, I know what's happening. Yeah. Um, bear, bear with me. Um, hang on, bear with me. Sorry about this. Let's turn that off. Um, I was Ivy Benson. I would tap dance across here for you now. They were often dancers, you know, just to keep you entertained. But you saw my qualifications, remember? You have to get the sperm out, Tim. <laughs> you might have to. You might have to. Just keep, keep talking about sperm and you're... Hang on. Uh, just... My lovely assistant, thank you. Hang on. Uh, Hang on. Uh, what do you think? the swing bands I was playing in. And uh, the girl who was our drummer that night, she's on the right here, she's called Jessica Dan. And almost immediately after that gig, she got signed to the record company and she is now the drummer for Hawks. And they're doing some kind of world tour or probably doing glass a bit moments. So I lost my drummer the first night, but she did at least drum for us once. She's just so fantastic. And I never managed to find another lady's drummer. It was, it's sad. The attrition rate is bad, one down. And then also, one of the things that I wanted, I didn't want to play the same music that everyone played, and I wanted to have the stripper in my set. So I said to my sweet little Sophie, who had never sung for the big band and never done anything like it, I said, Sophie, could you kind of, you know, do a little something and we'll play the stripper, you know, see, and this is what Sophie came up with. Let's see if we're going to play. <laughs> inner burlesque girl because when she came to the next rehearsal she brought a whip now i've told you i'm going to lose a lot of money running this band and she brings a whip she says joe do you think that do you think we can fit this into the act and it's 
just missing the chandelier up in the pub in Hersman Zoo. I think we'd have to buy a new chandelier if she does that again. And I said, so honestly, I just, I can't see how we can fit this in with our style. You know, I was up for being a bit of a disruptor, but not quite so disruptive. But uh, yeah, so Sophie then took off into burlesque. And I don't know if you know that um, if you're a burlesque performer, you have to have a silly name. And I've known her since she was a kid. Her middle name was Kate. And she used to make her own antlers and paint her face with little dots. So she loved her flora and fauna. So she needed a name for her act. I said, oh, how about Fauna Kate? <laughs> I'm not sure she knew what I'd done. But here is where Sophie went after my band. Yeah, so I lost so I lost my singer <laughs> to a better career than she had with me. So there's dear old former Kate. Um, then we had a gig uh, that summer where we were playing in a garden party, and we had a connection with the French horn player who had played the music for Star Wars. Now musicians never make any money, remember the first two slides, but anybody who was on the original recording of Star Wars made some money because they were all the following films and it got played and played and played. And so one of the things is they, anyone who was on the recording had this little song, um, Star Wars made me a fortune, paid off my mortgage, bought me a car. <laughs> And so I told this story and then to the audience and I said, and now we are going to play you Star Wars and it's going to be featuring our French horn player, Emma. And I point to Emma's chair and she's not in it. And someone says, oh God, it's its own day at the school. <laughs> so I haven't actually got the player there for the piece that I've said we're going to do. And this was the other thing that's standard with running an all-girls band. We're kind of at the bottom of the domestic roll call. So if the guys moved or if your husband needs something, your kids or something, the ladies wouldn't get to rehearsal. So that was a little bit of a failure on the Star Wars front. Um, we lasted till Christmas and uh, I said to Sophie, can you do me a, a little Christmas something? So she came, it, she was just fantastic, she put herself in a box and she unwrapped herself and she emerged in a beautiful little red Christmas dress which was a bit risque and quite a lot of my girls in my band were fighting me now, wondering what direction we were going in. And it was all perfect and then she took the dress off and she was in a red like bra and knickers and so that was a too hard to so I lost another couple of players who didn't really weren't too happy. And now we've gone past December 2019 and you know what's coming next, don't you? Oh, oh it was COVID! So I was running a Zoom choir, that is my COVID hat. I don't know if you've ever tried sticking silicone curlers to a silicone um, swimming cap, but it's not easy. So, so COVID absolutely put a stop to everything. We just got going, we were on a roll and um, we couldn't rehearse because one of the things that happened very early in the pandemic was some American choir got together, had a big sing-along in March and half of them dropped dead because you generate quite a big aerosol when you're singing. We were blowing instruments plus you know, all our spit dropping out, we'd press our vials, a big pint of spit falls on the floor, would have gone into one of those jars for an so proud, wouldn't it? So yes, <laughs> so Covid just put a stop, we couldn't rehearse and we were really Stopped for two years, and when we came back after the pandemic, this is what happened to Mark Byrne. So everybody with a big X on their face has disappeared. Some of them, there was quite a lot of hissy fits going on, so I lost quite a lot of people with a bit of flouncing off. Um, one of my lovely trumpets got COVID, couldn't come back and play. So we were just, we were being decimated, and now I'm having to hunt around, find new lady players. And of course, I've got a small pool, they've got to be in East Sussex, they've got to be ladies, you've got to be quite good to be able to read our charts. Um, it was, and I was getting really stressed. And my bank balance was going down like this. I had to buy a new car because I was carting all this stuff around. I bought all the music, I bought all the costumes. Um, we did a Christmas gig. This was bounced around because of COVID a couple of times. And I wanted to show you that by now, I'm having to really rely on these guys. <laughs> rehearsal. Uh, far end of Sergeant Major, he, he does coronation, he used to play the big kettle drums, bass trombone, uh, my lovely bass player in the middle and then this fun drummer and uh, <laughs> the drummer, the first time he wore a dress at one of our gigs, he came up to me in the half time, he said, you won't believe what's just happened to me, he said, I just walked through the garden and I got goosed by someone, I said, welcome to our world, and it's what happens. 
<laughs> so our last gig was this one we played in Brighton. Um, by now, half these faces, I probably don't know half of their names. It's been really, it's been really difficult. I'm burnt out. I've done the best that I can. Um, and there we were. That was us on stage. I, I just thought I had, I had something great, but it, I couldn't keep it going. Because remember, even Ivy lost six a year. There's 18 people in the swing band. We'd been going three years. I lost all 18 of them. Uh, so yes, that was a tragedy. So just a final thought. Duke Kellington, he kept a band going for 40 years as well. And somebody said, Duke, how did you do it? And let's just quote him for Barton. Duke said, uh, there is nothing to keeping a band together. You simply have to have a gimmick, and the gimmick I use is to pay them money. <laughs> And uh, maybe that was where I went wrong. Anyway, it's been lovely to have my opportunity. Thank you.